Today, I want to talk to you about the danger of worthless things and read to you from the great Psalm, Psalm 119, verses 36 and 37, where we read this. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. The composer of the great Psalm 119 knew something specifically about himself and in general about human nature. He knew that covetousness is a threat to walking in God's way. Therefore, he prayed, incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. A heart inclined towards God's word would help him to be satisfied with whatever God provided. The psalmist also knew that one way to fight against covetousness is to keep one's eyes on the Lord and away from worthless things. So he prayed this, turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. It is true that some things, comparatively speaking, are worthless things. They are of no value for eternity and of little value for the present age. The psalmist prayed that God would empower and enable him to turn away his eyes and attention from such things. Many lives are wasted because people find themselves unwilling or unable to turn away their eyes from worthless things. The media and entertainment technology of the modern world brings before us an endless river of worthless things to occupy not only our eyes and our time, but also our hearts and our minds. Some things are obviously worthless. Other things are thought by many to be worthy, but actually they're worthless. They are worthless because they do no good. They're worthless because they do not last. They're worthless because they do not build faith, hope, or love. They're worthless because they distract from truly worthy things. And they're worthless because they have nothing to do with Jesus. Like many of us, the psalmist understood that he had a natural tendency towards putting his eyes on worthless things. So he prayed for that natural tendency to be counteracted. Yet the eyes are so powerful that the psalmist had to pray. He had to pray for a power outside of himself to turn his eyes from worthless things. It's almost as if we want to say this to the author of Psalm 119. What, don't you have any eyelids? Don't you have any muscles in your neck to turn your head? Yet, we can all sympathize with this prayer. Our eyes are, relatively speaking, so small, yet they can lead the whole person, and they often lead to utter destruction. This is because the eyes lead the heart, lead the mind, and therefore can lead the entire person. The psalmist did not gouge out his own eyes, or he didn't pray for God to do that. Instead, he wanted to look another way. He wanted to look a better way. The best way to look away from sin is to look at something else. He then prayed another prayer for revival. The psalmist prayed this, and revive me in your way. He wanted to be made alive again in God's pathway. You see, the psalmist wanted to walk in God's way and to do it with a revived heart. So he prayed for deadness in one direction, deadness towards worthless things. But he prayed for life in another direction, towards God's way. Friends, you can make that your prayer. You can turn your eyes away from worthless things and put them upon God's life and love. And you can pray that prayer today.